All right, guys, here we have a 1996 EasyGo TXT gas. This one here, holy crap, is it loaded with issues. I mean, there is just an entire power plant's worth of electrical wiring over there. And all kinds of goodies on the front. This one here has a couple issues. It is a bit hard starting. It's got loss of power. It's got a little bit of a rattle. I think the uh, bearing and the starter generator is starting to go. But what we're going to do is oil change. We're going to pull the carbon, clean it. We might do a valve adjustment, uh, filters, and all that stuff. We're going to basically give it a once over. And I believe we have a driver's side front tire or a passenger side tire. I have to double check my notes that we're going to replace with a used tire, potentially. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start with our carb cleaning and work our way down. Let's see what this looks like. Eh, dirty. We're going to change it. it. This one's missing the spark arrestor. There's no spark arrestor in this one. That's not good. If you get a backfire through the carburetor, a lot of times what will happen is it'll set the air filter on fire if it makes it around. I've seen that happen more times than I care to admit. Oil is a bit, it doesn't look terrible, but he said, let's do an oil change. I don't really think he needs it, but I don't know the last time he did it was. And I, I always say, well, you guys know me. I always say an oil change is cheap and an engine is not. So we'll do an oil change on it. Let's start with the air box and carb cleaning first and see how we see how we make out. So this one we have some oddball nuts in here. They're not the shouldered ones that belong in here. It's just a flat standard nut. I swear, to this day, I'm never going to understand why people do what they do to these things. It's missing all the spacers. Oh, okay, it's missing two spacers. I'm going to take all the hardware out and put it in here. And there's all kinds of oil in the air box assembly here. Take this off. Remember to put it on before you close this up, you dummy. I think we're going to be doing a valve adjustment on this cart. It looks like we're missing. Turn the key off. Nope, the gasket's there. We're good. I'll grab my nut driver in a second here. I just want to back that out. Oof, look at how rusty that is. That is rusty. All right, we're gonna be cutting this fuel line just a little bit to fix that nonsense. Bend those back up, it kinda Bent them down a little bit from tapping on it there. You guys haven't noticed the running theme of this year is carburetor cleanings and and the like. Last year it was carburetor cleanings and solenoids. This year it seems to be mostly carburetor cleanings. All right, well, that's not horrible. <laughs> you know as well as I do, we have all seen a bit worse. We have seen a lot worse on this channel. No water in the fuel, so that's good. And like I said, this is a little bit of oil mixed with gasoline and some of the, the last cart work that we did in here. All right, let's see if we can get this bad boy apart.
put them right on this paper towel. Everything. Take everything out that we can take out. There is not a lot to these carbs, guys. There is not a lot to these things at all. All right, the main emulsion tube's coming out, main jet. It's not coming out very well, but it's coming out nonetheless. A little chunky in there. Wow, there's the main jet. I think the emulsion tube is, oh, no it ain't, okay. There's the emulsion tube. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get down in there to get that jet out of there. I have got to get myself, oh, can we? Mm, no. Damn. How about this one? I got down in there with just a bit. <laughs> I got that jet out of the way. So, all right, we got the carb apart. Let me just squirt some crap in there and get her cleaned up. See if this helps at all. See, I like to back flush all of the ports inside the Venturi. It kind of helps push all the crap out, I guess. I'm trying to keep this in frame, guys. It's a little, a little difficult right now. I'm. I'm trying to work a little quickly because I want to get this cart done so I can get it loaded on the trailer and out of here tonight. There's really not a lot of stuff in here, guys. You know, most of the time you can get away with a simple drop the bowl, squirt some carburetor cleaner up and around the, the bits of there of the carburetor and be done and call it a day. I could always tell when a crappy mechanic has been in this in these golf carts working around. Yeah, I could always tell. I could always tell when there's a crap mechanic working on stuff because they do things half-assed or not at all. Nice and shiny. All right, so there's carb. Carburetor cleaned. Good. Let's get it reinstalled. See, this design here, the frickin' starter generator gets in the way. This engine's leaking oil. I'm gonna put that on first so I don't have to fight with it later. Slime that in there. Snap that on there. All right, now, so like I was saying about the fuel line, how I was gonna cut it. The reason I wanna cut that off is because that nipple on the carburetor was a bit rusted up and the nipple coming off of, or the little bit of fuel line that was on that nipple was kinda like cruddy. So we're gonna get our quarter inch nut driver. You know, my big arm is in the way. So I've been asked, too, one thing I want to address, just to answer a couple of questions. Actually, here, before I answer the question, a couple of things I've been thinking about doing are reading some of your comments while I work on a cart and answer some questions. What do you guys think of that idea? I kind of like that idea. I might do it. I just have to work at getting a bunch of comments together before I can sit here and answer your questions. So yeah, one thing I want to address. People ask, at least I've had a few people ask, why don't I test drive the golf carts when I'm done working on them? Uh, the answer to that question is I do. I do take them for a road test. I don't film it because 
I'm driving the golf cart and nine times out of ten the golf cart is fine when I after I repair it so there's really nothing to film honestly but uh, I do I do road test them once I'm done if I'm I always have a gut feeling if there's something not right and I'll come back and I'll redo the repair or I'll make other repairs that may be required or I'll get in touch with the customer and say, hey, this is what I'm finding. Do you want me to proceed? Blah, 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 that kind of thing. So yeah, I, I do road test the golf carts after I, do make the, after I make the repairs. So they go for a drive. I like to take that opportunity with me and the golf cart and me and the golf cart only to make sure that everything is running and operating the way it's supposed to after the repair has been made. So that, that gives me a little bit more time to concentrate on the repair. You know, the post repair noises and creaks and cracks and all that stuff. So that's why I don't film when I'm road testing, but yes. To answer that question again, I do road test the golf carts once I'm done fixing them. And in order to kind of keep some sanity with golf cart with these videos being, you know, under an hour, I have to cut a lot of stuff out of it. But and that's just something I don't film. Hope that answers your questions. Hope that answers your question. That's one question, not multiple. All right, let's see if we in fact need to do a valve adjustment. We gotta adjust that starter generator belt for sure. Either the clutch is starting to fail, the bearings in the starter generator are starting to fail, or there's another problem internally on the engine. That's what that clanking noise is. It sounds like the clutch. All right, so the pump is not pulling, uh, pulling a vacuum. I think we're gonna just replace this clamp here. I don't normally like these squeeze clamps because a lot of times they just suck. Yeah, the pump is pulling. It's just not able to pull the vacuum on the fuel line. Let's put a new clamp on that. Another question that I get a lot is, why don't you do replace the fuel lines? Well, the reason I don't replace the fuel lines all the time is because it's not always necessary. Yeah, sometimes the fuel lines can get really bad and, you know, I will change them. Uh, but a lot of stuff that you guys don't get to see or hear is between me and my customer. They ultimately have a lot of the decision-making power on what I do unless I feel that it's required or necessary. All right, now the fuel pump's pumping. All right, so we're good now. That's what that was. That pulled it right from the bottom of the tank. Fuel filter's filling. Just gotta give it a minute to prime itself up here and see how it starts. I wanna see if it'll start without choke. It's not hooked up anyway. All right, so before things get too toasty in here, let's hook up this choke. Why are we? No, I'm not farting. That's my knee up against the golf cart body. All right, I think we might do a, we're gonna at least check the valves on this. I think this, I think that clutch is starting to shit the bed. I gotta tighten up that starter generator belt first because I, I noticed that it is slipping quite a bit.
The other thing too that's very important about working on golf carts or anything mechanical is to, you have to, have to, have to drop your tools all the time. It's very important to, in order to get things done correctly. Sounds my sarcasm because I drop my tools. Okay, here we go. Let's start our generator belts tighter. See how it starts now. Oh, did you notice the clanging went away? I bet you that's because, you know what, let's do a, let's do a good old fashioned compression test before we pull the valve cover. It would be nice to see if we really are gonna benefit from doing that. Spark plugs are not very tight. Champion. I th think we're gonna change these out. Put some uh, good spark plugs in here, NGKs, the, the correct spark plug. Believe it or not, the wrong spark plug on a <clears throat> non-computer controlled electronic ignition system can really throw things off a bit. Okay, let's see what we got here. Full throttle. Okay, yeah, so adjusting the valves on that cylinder is not going to be any good. Not going to do us any good since that one's good. The spark plug wasn't even tight. Guys, when you put these spark plugs in, you got to crank them down. You got to squash that washer on there because if you don't, you're not going to seal the cylinder correctly. See how that... That's tight. Now I don't go, you know, frickin' arm and hammer on it or anything. But look at that. I probably could have backed that out by hand. The plugs aren't bad, but I'll give them back to him if he wants them. Some people want their spark plugs back. I don't know why. They put the most expensive spark plugs in like they're going to get you better gas mileage. All right, so that one's a bit weaker. That one's only about 130 PSI, where the other one was 150 nearly. So maybe we'll pull the valve cover and just check our valve lash and see what it's at. It's not going to hurt. No, it's not hot, not even warm. All right, let's see what our valve lash is at. Okay, what are we for? Let's go to five thousandths. Let's go to five thousandths. All right, we're gonna start. Now, see that smoke coming out of there? That's the stuff that gets pushed through the PCV and reburned on the intake stroke, or on the intake. Mm. You know what? I think we're gonna we're halfway here, we might as, might as well just adjust the valves. It's out a little bit. Not bad, but it's... a little bit. Okay, now, I don't know if you caught that, but that adjuster screw turned because I wasn't holding back on it and it tightened it up. So that's why you gotta hold back on them. There we go. That's not bad. Compression's not terrible on this engine. Okay. Oh yeah, that one's way out. 
Well, it's a good thing we're in here doing this because it's it needed it. This is something, this is annual maintenance, believe it or not, on these engines. This is annual maintenance. These should be at least checked and adjusted routinely, but nobody ever does that, so. Okay, good. Oh yeah, that's better. And then what we're gonna do is check this again and see if our compression improves. I don't think it really will because it's really, it's not that far out to begin with. And it's actually loose, it's not tight, which is almost, it's exactly the opposite of what you would expect. Okay, valve lash has been adjusted. Oop. We also have to do an oil change on this cart. In case you're wondering, I hand started each threaded, each thread so I don't cross thread them. Recheck this cylinder, because we know this is the low side. Now this is a dry compression test. You can do a wet compression test, is where you take a little bit of oil and you squirt it down the spark plug hole and then do this very test. Turn key on first. Okay, so you can see we're at 125 PSI-ish and that really didn't benefit us any at all. So we knew the, the valve lash was okay to begin with, but at least now it's, we know it's adjusted and it's correct. I'm not gonna test the other cylinder because like I said, I know that these are where they're supposed to be, so we're not gonna bother. see if it starts any better with these plugs actually tight. It's definitely better. Starts right up. I think the carburetor had a lot to do with that. air cleaner is going to help, the starter generator belt being tight and fuel filter. All this stuff combined is going to definitely make this run a heck of a lot better than it did. All right, let's uh... Oh, looks like somebody's changed that out at one time or lost the original one. It's not the right one. We're going to let it glug, 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 glug. There we go. See, stainless steel mesh filter. This thing only goes in one way. Oh, this dude's got a lot of wires and crap all over this golf cart. It's a wonder that this thing hasn't caught on fire. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying, holy crap. Awesome. Leave that in there to drip off. Okay, now all we gotta do is just add some oil. Before you open this cap, you should really wipe this area off if it's really dirty to prevent any contaminants getting down into the uh, valve area there. Just a heads up, if you're a smoker, don't smoke around those vapors because they are highly flammable. You will have a bad day. All right, oil cap's on, let's check our oil. Spot on.
See, he's got this governor kind of cranked up too, so I think that's another reason why he's having a little bit of starting issues. Um, that's really all that we got to do to this thing, guys. I'm not going to film changing a tire, but as far as this video goes, this cart is done. I got to throw the seat back on here and get in touch with the customer, make sure there's nothing else that we need to do before I turn this back over to them and get it loaded up and out of here. But as for this video, that's going to be it. Uh, we're going to close it out here because there's really nothing else that's really that exciting to deal with. Oh, look what I found. It was right here in the cup holder. Oh. Okay. That's where we're going to leave it for now. Well, I'll take that back off and put that on because you know what? That belongs on there. I got to find out why that's off first before I do. Well, he's missing the hardware for this, so we can't put it on. Never mind. Anyway. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, as always. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Don't forget to ring the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload a video to the channel. Be sure to check the video's description for links to products I use every single day to bring you these videos. And also, there's a link down below to my Amazon store, Facebook page, and all other social media pages and website. Leave a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions. And as always, until next time, we'll see you in the next video.